And to that, welcome to this uh, quick video in which I'm going to give you a little game which can help you with improvising. And it goes like this. You're going to take um, how can I, 10 notes. So first of all, you're going to write the numbers 1 to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I can only get 8. You can do it up to 10. I can only get 8 on here. doesn't matter. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to choose random notes between 1 and 7 and you're going to apply them to any key that you want. So uh, let's just choose a key. We'll, we'll do the key after. So I'm going to pick out random notes. So let's just say I know 4, uh, 7, uh, 6, 2, 5, um, and then maybe uh, 1, 3, 6. Just absolutely random notes. Now we're going to put those note values into the key of F, our chosen key. I'll show you the paper. So I've just done like that. I've written 1 to 10, or 1 to 8, and uh, I've chosen random numbers, and we're in the key of F. So we're now going to put those notes into the note values, into the key of F. So 4 is a B flat, 7 is the E, 6 is the D, 2 is the G, 5 is the C, 1 is the F, 3 is the A, and uh, is that 6? Yeah, 6. 6 is the D again. So now we need to just learn those notes in the key of F. Now, why is this interesting? I'm going to ask you a question. Where did those numbers come from? I don't know. I just randomly said them, and that's exactly where the improvisation idea comes from, even composition sometimes. You can use this in composition as well. You don't question where these letters, and numbers rather, came from. Even the key of F, where did the key of F come from? I want to encourage you to stop thinking when it comes to improvisation. What we're going to do is apply a little bit of theory afterwards but I'm, I'm trying to encourage you to activate your inspirational source here and not question everything all the time. Not to play theoretically, but to play spontaneously. So let's just find that pattern in the key of F. We'll worry about the chords afterwards. B flat, E, D, G, C. And then the next part is going to go F, A, D. It's quite nice. So let me just see how, let me just drill that pattern. You can do the same if you want to. That's quite nice. Now I'm seeing this in some sections. For me, at the moment, B flat, E and D feel separated from the G and C. And then the F and A, do the F and the A, I'd, I'd even say the F and the A feel separated from the D. Like this is just out on its own. So that's the next thing that you do. You dissect it into little sections. And again, ask yourself, why did you choose those sections? I don't know. It, 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 just, it just felt right. Now, let's just put some chords. It's a nice thing, first of all, to just practice the diatonic chords of the letters that you've played. So we know we're in the key of F. So we have B flat. Now that would be a major seven. So just, let's just go through them. Four beats each. E, seven. I'm looking at the numbers here, or the, and the letters, doesn't matter. It's the same note. 7 is, an, is a half diminished. 6, the D is a minor. 7. G is a minor 7. The 5 is a 7. We've got a little 2 5 1 there. That's just coincidental. Major 7 on the F. 3 is a minor 7. And D is a minor 7. That just all sounds nice. In a way, they could be your chords for a composition. Each chord becomes... You see, I'm just playing the diatonic chords and I improvising, or you could create your own little melody based on those chords. So that's how it can be used for composition. But in, in, a, in a jazz improvisation way, what you might do is choose a chord for each section and these notes will be the improvisation for that. And if you need to modify anything, so be it. That's the sort of theory layer that comes in. So over the B flat, what can our first chord be? Well, it could be anything. Let's just do it as a, um, uh, a B flat chord. Let's just do it based on what it is, the four. So that's going to be a B flat, but a major seven because it's the four chord. So the melody is going to have an E. Now that's a, that's a sharp 11 in the key of B flat. Why the B flat and not F? F is just the master key. That's your orientation. We're playing a chord, B flat, within the key of F. So we have to note, name the note values based on the, the chord root, which is B flat, the key of the chord. 
um, so we've got uh, the melody is going one sharp eleven, which is not nice as a melody note normally, but it has a nice tension here. It's kind of becoming a, to be a dark piece. Now the next question comes: How do you play it? For me, it's coming out like this: one, two. That's how it's coming out. Now, a hundred people could do this in different ways. It's coming out like that for me. So there's four beats on that first chord. That's fine. It won't always be like that. I could have done it quicker. I could have just done it for two beats. And then gone on to somewhere else. I could have delayed the whole thing till the end. And then gone into the next chord. All these different variations, that's down to you. And that's why I'm talking about discovering your inspirational source. How do you play naturally? This is such a great fun game. You can do a thousand of these. You can do one a day. It's wonderful. So, now that could be an improvisation idea. And then you start to note what's interesting about this. Oh, and I'm playing on the E. That's a sharp 11. That sounds quite nice with the B flat. It's a bit mysterious. So you're learning a bit of theory as well. And you'll remember that. Oh, we'll play a sharp 11. Or the sharp 4, if you want to see it more quickly. But it's a sharp 11 with a major seven, nice. That's a nice little lick. So you can sort of develop your own little licks by doing this. Okay, let's move on to the next part, the G and the C. Now, what chord can we do with that? Well, we could do any chord diatonically, because they all work. So maybe we could do a G on a two, we could do a two chord, G minor. Now that gives us a C, which is the 11. So let me just make a note of the chord first. So the G is gonna be uh, G minor seven, I guess. And we'll just note out of interest that the 11, let me just circle them so they're more interesting, that the 11, the C in the key of G, that's G minor 7. The camera doesn't autofocus, although it changes all the way through the video, but um, G minor 7 gives us the 11. I guess I'll put this onto my Instagram, and you can uh, see it there if you follow me there, at Dan the Composer. Um, so that's quite interesting to go 11. That's quite nice, I like that. So let's just play it, and we're going to drill it, drill it, drill it. Now, if someone says to you, play the piano, you could play a collection of all of your little pieces like this. You could even double the length and put another eight or whatever on the, on the other side and remember the whole composition. So, how did, I, how did it go? Oh, yes. So that's how it's coming out for me. They're coming out on the second half of each bar. nice little composition or, or a improvisation here. Now, F and A. Let's do another chord. Let's do um, a six chord, D minor seven. That's going to be safe because the F is the minor. Uh, that's the note, isn't it? Yeah, one. And the A is three. So that's just the fifth of D. So minor to five. That's quite nice. Okay. So we're going to put the chord type there as uh, D minor seven. The A, these are simple ones, it's just minor and five in the key of D, so we just add it together. Nice sound. Now that one I did at the beginning. Now I just wanted to add an E there for an extra kind of nice note, so maybe I'll just add that at the end. A, and I'll just put a little bit at the end here, maybe I'll just put an E, just because it sounded quite nice, you know? I know you can't see so well, but it... it I just put an E here, just because it sounded nice. As a sort of an afterthought. And then the D on its own. So it went. And we could even drop down chromatically there to the D. What chord do we use? Let's use a half diminished. Make it more interesting. So that's the seventh. So we'll use E. So I'm going to put E, because that's the, the seventh. Um... I'm choosing these chords randomly. They're not related to the first numbers, of course. E half diminished. So the symbol for that is a circle, like a degree. That's the whole diminished. And you put a line through it. And that means uh, minus 7 flat 5, half diminished. Uh, okay, fine. I've, I've got videos on chord types. Or just ask a question on chords if you need to. So that's going to go. Now that's very unstable. So... Where are you going to go next? What's the next chord going to be? I wonder. It's quite a nice way to sort of end the, the tune, actually. So. Now, 
where are we going to go next? I don't know. That's the whole point. I could, of course, double the length of the video, turn over and do another eight, but I won't. But you get the idea. So I'll just recap it for you. I wrote down the number of notes I want in my composition or improvisation. So there's eight on this page. I wrote random numbers between one and seven, which are notes from the major scale. Then I chose a key, so I wasn't influenced by seeing a key as I was choosing the notes. So you do the key, which is F, as the third thing. You write one to eight or one to, one to ten, whatever. Then you write numbers from a major scale. Then you choose the key. Then you put them, you put those note values in the key that you've chosen. So I, my numbers were four, seven, six, two, five, one, three, six in the key of F. They become B flat E D G C F A D. I drilled that shape and then I dissected it into sort of where I could feel the separation was in the melody. That enabled me to put a chord for each section. Perhaps I, I could sort of extend the um, separating line just to separate the chords uh, a bit more. And then I just chose random chords which were diatonic to the key of F. I have a video on modal theory, all the diatonic chord stuff. That's uh, easy enough to do. There's only seven chord types to remember. Two, two, uh, one of them is th it's like three of them are the same, and then two of them are the same. There's three minor sevens, two major sevens, and then a dominant seven and a half diminished. So it's not actually seven to learn, it's only four. Uh, and then I played the melody, you know, and I started to identify any interesting notes. So the sharp 11 came out on the E, the 11 on the G minor, it's quite nice. The E half diminished is a chord that is very unstable. So you see how you can actually acquire some nice theoretical elements in this. Um, and not just, it's not just about random notes, it's actually got quite a lot of uh, uses. So I'll just close the video by playing it and we'll see what happens. So. Where does that go? Isn't it interesting? Hopefully you'll uh, enjoy this game and it has been of use to you. As always, likes, comments, subscriptions are always welcome. Have a look on my video management website, Waterpeans and Syllabus, and perhaps Patreon, and I'll see you in the next video. All the best, and bye for now.